Hi everyone, it is January 5, 2018. Mysterious eye cancer cluster strikes young women within 25 miles of Huntersville, North Carolina. Here in the title it says 15 are diagnosed with disease that only affects five in every million and yet then they say an eye cancer cluster has been diagnosed in nearly two dozen people, which is more than 15, in a 25 mile radius. Interesting. Okay. Um, I don't think very many people do any kind of checking on articles anymore. I think a lot of mainstream media articles are actually written by, hmm, I don't know, artificial intelligence. All you have to do is insert a couple of facts and the computer will write the article. Anyway, what is this? It is ocular melanoma, a form of eye cancer that is most common in men in their 60s. However, two-thirds of the patients around Huntersville, North Carolina, are women in their 30s or younger. And, well, if this cancer then affects the liver, you can die. You can die. It affects five in one million. Um, all right. What do they know about this? They don't know much. Here, an ophthalmologist leading the efforts to find out what's going on in this small town told the Daily Mail online, in all of our studies, we've never found an environmental or genetic factor. Really? No environmental or genetic factor. Well, they're still looking into it. They will be doing geospatial studies to find out what is going on here with this uh, strange cluster of mostly women coming down with this eye cancer. I will link below to all of the all of the articles that I will be working off of, but it seems that several of the women all went to Hopewell High School. So they test, tested the soil and the water there and they didn't come up with anything. Genetic study found no hereditary causes for the diseases. So if there's no hereditary causes, there are certainly environmental causes. And while this article does not mention any of the possible environmental causes, I think, hmm, could it be microwave radiation. So you would think that if it were micro microwave radiation, we're all in areas with an awful lot of cell phone towers and Gwen towers and all using those devices. What if they turned up the frequencies in this particular area? This is Huntersville, North Carolina. Huntersville, a very small town in North Carolina. And this is how many cell phone towers they have? Really? Wow. Okay. So, I did a little research to find out, hmm, what are the ocular effects of microwave electromagnetic radiation? And here, our government knows radio frequency energy has been reported to cause a variety of ocular effects, primarily cataracts. But it also affects the retina, cornea, and other ocular systems. And then as you're reading this abstract, you go right down to the bottom, and our government scientists have said the results of four recent human studies show that there is no clear evidence of an association between radio frequency exposure and ocular cancer. Well, that's not true. It simply is not true. So. I will link below to this document that goes into an awful lot of the studies that show that, yeah, mm, sorry, 
those radio frequencies. Researchers, scientists have found that this microwave Wi-Fi hell that we are all living in very much has dangerous effects on our eyes and yes it can cause cancer. Now do you think these uh, people who are going to be doing the geospatial study will even bother to look at the numerous cell phone towers and what what levels those cell phone towers are set at the frequencies that they emit. I'm going to read some of this. Director of the Central Brain Tumor Registry of the United States, Lloyd Morgan, quote, there is every indication that cell phones cause brain tumors, salivary gland tumors, and eye cancer. Yet, because the cell phone industry provides a substantial pr proportion of research funding, this reality is hidden from the general public. Researchers with the University of Chicago in 1988, the formation of cataracts seem to be related directly to the power of the microwave and the duration of exposure. Eye damage in the microwave age. Children are especially susceptible to having their eyes damaged. So, scientists with the Environmental Health Trust, they found two-way radio transceiver systems in the form of smartphones should not be used directly in front of children's eyes and brains. It impairs the eyesight, the eyesight of little kids. It cooks a child's eyes. So keep in mind that upcoming 5G millimeter wave technologies will make possible a tsunami of virtual reality toys for those who do not, do not value their vision never before in human history has such a threat against human eyesight been unleashed as it is now. Um, it is documented that microwave radiation causes serious damage to all parts of the eye at non-thermal levels. And these dangers, it, no one can escape them, but they're especially, especially dangerous for children and infants. Myriad microwave frequencies now range perpetually through the environment, and those induced currents slam through everyone's eye tissues. Studies of people living close to cell tower antennas document widespread complaints about eye and vision abnormalities, the documented pathological effects on human eyes from radio frequency microwave radiation include eye inflammation and redness, pain or burning in the eyes, a feeling of pressure behind the eyes, floaters, cataracts, deteriorating vision, including macular degeneration and eye cancers. Buildings, vehicles, and aircraft saturated with this radiation are exceptionally hazardous to human eyes. Microwave eye damage may become obvious only months or years after the damage has been inflicted. Okay, so you have children that you give these cell phones to. They're staring at the screen or they're staring at some gadget that is Wi-Fi and you happen to have a lot of those children living in a particular area and suddenly years later they develop eye cancer and they're young they're not the typical candidates for this eye cancer which is men in their sixties um, 
so yeah, uh, the damage may only be revealed months or years after it's been inflicted, leaving the vision impaired with no proof as to the origin of their disabilities, pain, and economic hardship. Wireless radiation profiteers are not by law liable for universal eye damage and incremental loss of eyesight. So, <laughs> you're pretty much stuck. Those who sold you the product, those who manufactured the product, you have no recourse of action against them. So you suffer all of the economic hardship. Exposure to small screen wireless technology has potential to make young eyes old before their time. Many small screen slaves develop a dry eye condition that results in gritty inflamed eyes resulting from hours of staring at miniature mobile screens. The mind apparently focuses so strongly on the screen that users forget to blink, affecting eye lubrication. In the UK, an eye surgeon warned that smartphones are causing sight problems to soar in children as young as seven. They literally cook the eye tissues of those who continually expose themselves to non-thermal wireless devices and microwave saturated environments like your home that has Wi-Fi in it. If powerful uh, GSM 3G, 4G radiation from cell towers or cell phones and cell towers uh, and tablet computers can travel at the speed of light to tower antennas miles away, that same radiation can most certainly penetrate the human eye only inches or millimeters away. Radiation researcher Dr. Ross Addy uh, stated that 40% of the electromagnetic energy emitted from cell phones goes directly into the hand and the head of users. And another researcher, Dr. Gandhi, working at the University of Utah, verified that microwave radiation is delivered deeply into the eye from wireless devices positioned directly against the skull. God, I can't believe I've been doing these videos for six years. And I see these kids in stores. They're, yeah, children in the supermarket, in the carts, their mothers shopping, and the kids staring at a phone. It's very sad what is taking place, but Dr. Gandhi verified that microwave radiation is delivered deeply into the eye from these wireless devices positioned directly against the skull. This man-made energy oscillates, vibrates, eye tissues at millions or billions of times per second. So, crucial information about Dr. Gandhi's research. An adult eye, the microwave absorption is 3.3 milliwatts. This is 330,000 times more radiation than the full body exposure limit advised by the bioinitiative scientists in 2007 and may as well do this now let me get the bioinitiative report or what I will do is link it below I don't want to spend much time looking for it I will link to it below should be the first one but it doesn't seem to be. Okay. Um, so, the adult eye, 330,000 times more radiation than those who studied the effects of this radiation have recommended the levels to be. A 10 year old child, 1.8 million times more radiation. A 5 year old child, four million times more radiation than they should be exposed to. A 10-year-old absorbs five times more cell phone radiation 
than adult eyes, and a five-year-old, they absorb 12 times more radiation. Renowned biomedical researcher at the University of Washington, the effects of radiofrequency radiation exposure that could have important implications on cellular telephone use is that on the eye, damage to corneal endotheliols, I'm sorry, degenerative changes in the iris and the retina, and altered vision were reported in non-human primates. A collaborative study by scientists at the Israel Institute of Technology and the Washington University School of Medicine, high frequency microwave electromagnetic radiation from mobile phones and other devices has potential to damage eye tissues. The U.S. government quickly learned during and after World War II that radio frequency microwave radiation permanently damages eye tissues and denigrates eye sight. And a victim may not know for years before they develop inoperable cataracts. U.S. Air Force study in 1994. Clinical studies indicate that exposure to radio frequency microwave radiation causes physiological damage to the eye that can result in loss of sight. It has been observed that irradiation causes the formation of cataracts in the lenses of the eyes. The lens of the eye appears to be most susceptible to this radiation at frequencies between 1 and 10 gigahertz. For this frequency range, it has been observed that the lens fibers will suffer irreversible damage to a greater extent than other ocular elements. Oh boy. So, um, we are looking at a massive problem with our eyesight. Here, this is normal, clear lens, and this is a lens clouded by a cataract. You can click on the link below to get a closer look. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, the IEEE, the technical advisor to the FCC, is directly responsible for the FCC's deadly and non-protective exposure standards, which enable and aggrandize the military-industrial complex at the expense of human health. From June 2001, this group, the IEEE, has known that this microwave radiation has detrimental effects to our eyes. And this is what the committee minutes in 2001 read or read. Range of a few gigahertz, gigahertz as in Wi-Fi. Resonances may occur in ball-shaped eyes and testes. These organs are more vulnerable than other tissues. Exposure to microwave radiation can lead to increased temperature that is sufficient to damage tissues. Microwaves at lower frequencies will be deposited deeper in the eye, while at higher frequencies they will be absorbed near the front surface of the eye. Lenses have been thought to be the most vulnerable tissue since it has no blood flow because the lens is a back vascular. It has been thought to be particularly sensitive to thermal effects of microwave exposure. The FCC likewise states two areas of the body, the eyes and the testes, are known to be particularly vulnerable to heating by RF energy because of the relative lack of available blood flow to dissipate the excessive heat load. Short-term exposure to very high levels of radiation can cause cataracts in rabbits. British researchers reported that cell phones emitting 900 megahertz or 1.8 gigahertz can raise the temperature in the eyes. 
by 1.4 degrees. Scientists in India, mobile phone radiation, supposedly flowing at non-thermal levels, heats the eyes enough to cause damage. The government of India warned that the use of cell phones causes vision damage. The Israel-U.S. study found irreversible morphological and biochemical damage to the lens cell layers. They found that the lens tissues actually became pitted with bubbles, a precursor to cataract formation. The damage was so radical that these scientists advised people to stop irradiating their eyes with mobile phones and use landlines. The latest medical science indicates that children perpetually exposed to wireless microwaves are guaranteed to ultimately suffer high damage and deteriorating vision at a much younger age than previous generations. What we are doing to these kids is so unbelievably tragic, reprehensible, immoral, so unbelievably grossly tragic and astro astronomical. Number of very young American children now require eyeglasses and I've said this in many videos, any kind of metal is a conductor of these frequencies. So you're wearing metal rim glasses, you're pulling the frequencies more intensely right smack into your eyes. These kids walk around with metal rimmed glasses they are more at risk for their eyesight to deteriorate even more. I will link below. You can read more of these studies, but yes, eye cancer, eye cancer, eye cancer. Our government lies all the time. I want to very quickly just um, go into what uh, uh, Activist Post had a couple of articles just yesterday. Popular Science Magazine still blows off cell phone radiation warnings despite reports from the World Health Organization, Dr. Oz, Stephen Colbert, and others. I will link below to these articles, but it is stunning that these mainstream media outlets, these online magazines like Popular Science, there's no evidence that cell phones pose a public health risk no matter what California says. I posted a video a couple of weeks ago. The Department of Health in California has issued warnings on the use of cell phones. And this popular science magazine can actually come out and headline an article like this. It is disgusting. I, I what do you say? This possible carcinogen isn't going to give you cancer. And people read this stuff. Now they love it if they don't want to give up their cell phones. And they don't want to deal with the hassle of taking away those gadgets from their children. So they'll read something like popular science that will give them the permission to continue destroying their own health along with the health of their children. Um, countless studies, countless studies, countless thousands and thousands of peer-reviewed studies show the health risks of this kind of radiation. And this is popular science. There's another article on on activist post um, this posted today dear cell phone radiation warning naysayers me thinks thou protest too much Huffington Post Huffington Post it's still hard to figure out what's going on with them this seems bizarre because the California Department of Health 
wasn't the first to announce research, advisories, or warnings about cell phone and wireless radiation. In fact, they're so late in the game. There's been research since the 1970s. Research by government scientists or funded by our military that proves this radiation that we are now saturated in causes a myriad of health effects, detrimental. Some of this research was funded by the U.S. government. Some was funded by Motorola. Many media sources have reported this over the years. In 2011, the World Health Organization issued a report that cell phone and wireless radiation was a class 2B possible carcinogen. Even Stephen Colbert came out and said the World Health Organization has found that cell phone radiation is possibly carcinogenic to humans. Possibly? Well then, I'm possibly crapping in my pants. Love these comedians. But here you have it. Believe, hey, believe. Popular science. All links are below.